Hello again. Now, Ronald Mallette was only 10 years old when the father he worshipped suddenly died. And he's always harboured the fantasy of travelling back in time to save his father's life. Now, a professor of physics at the University of Connecticut, Dr. Mallette, may be on the verge of building a real time travel machine. He's authored a book about his work, The Time Traveller, One Man's Mission to Make a tra Time Travel a Reality. The soft cover edition will be released next month. Professor Mallette's project involves twisting space and time based on Einstein's theory of general relativity. And I had a most fascinating discussion with him. Einstein's theory allows you to manipulate space and time. And what I realized was that I could use light based on Einstein's theory to manipulate time. So I'm a theoretical physicist like Einstein. And what I was able to do was to design a set of equations that so that time travel is possible. What I did was sort of the analog of time travel of equals mc square. And the thing is, is that that was an equation that Einstein came up with. But what I need is the experiments in order to demonstrate my theory but that I came up with the foundation for it, yes. So theoretically, it is possible f f for you to go back in, for anyone to go back in time, for you to go, go back and, and meet with your, your father again. Physically, though, is it possible? That's right. Well, there's a limitation. Uh, one of the problems is, is that this is a real time machine. And people, in fact, have uh, asked, well, if time travel is possible, how come we're not inundated with time travelers? But with a real time machine, you have to realize that it's the machine itself that's creating the effect. That means that if I turn the machine on today and leave it on, let's say for uh, a year, I could travel back a half a year, all the way back up to the point that the machine was turned on, but I can't go earlier than that. You, you've, you've, you're taking me with you so far. I'm following all of this. It's, it's not getting too complicated for me just yet. I have a feeling the next bit might be, though. Tell me how it's done. I mean, how do you physically get a, a person, a, 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 an object, how do you physically get it to go back in time? Okay, I can explain that, but one of the things that I should mention that with my work, we're not trying to send a person back into the past. What we're trying to do is to see if we can send subatomic particles or information, which would be a major breakthrough in itself. But to try to send a person back, that's not something that we're trying to aim at, and that would be something that perhaps in the distant future we'll be able to do. But right now, what we're trying to do is just with information and subatomic particles. That's important. But I can illustrate it very simply. What I've been able to show is that by using a circulating beam of light, a laser beam. Now, you can get a laser beam to circulate. There's a number of different ways of doing that. That is to say that you can get a light beam to go around and around and around. Now, what my theory shows based on Einstein's work is that the circulating beam of light will cause the twisting of empty space. And you might say, well, uh, how can we understand this, this twisting of empty space by a circulating light beam? Well, it's very easy to illustrate if we think of a cup of coffee. Imagine that the coffee that's in this cup is like empty space. And imagine that this spoon is like the circulating light beam. Now, what happens when I take the spoon and stir the coffee? Well, the coffee, as you can see, swirls around. That's what the circulating light beam is doing to empty space, okay? Just as the spoon is stirring the coffee, the circulating light beam will stir empty space. But now you might say, well, wait a minute. If it's empty space, how am I gonna see it? Well, in the case of the coffee, suppose that I take a little coffee bean and put it in here. You can see what's happening. The coffee bean is being swirled around. So that's how you can see it. Now, in the case, the an analogous situation with empty space is that if I take a little subatomic particle called a neutron, and I put the neutron into the space, then as the circulating light beam is stirring the empty space, the little neutron will get swirled around. We will be able to see the neutron being swirled around, so we'll know that the empty space is moving around. That's step one. Now, in Einstein's theory, what's very important to realize is that space and time are linked. Whatever you do to space, also happens to time. What this means then is that as you're stirring the empty space, and if you stir it strong enough, then time will be twisted. Now, if we think of time as a straight line, say a straight line at the bottom of the line is the past, at the middle of the line is the present, and at the top of the line is the future. But if space is being twisted, then that straight line will be twisted into a loop. Now, imagine what's happening here. We're on a loop. 
So that means if I start out at the past, I move along the loop to the present, and I continue along the loop. But remember, I've made that line into a loop. So I can go from the past to the present to the future, but I'm on this loop, so I can go from the future back to the past. So that is the core of the idea. Now, Dr. Mallette and his colleagues need to raise a quarter of a million dollars to conduct their space-time twisting experiment, and they're currently seeking both public and private donations. So what do you reckon? That was amazing, though I have to say, I did start to get a little bit lost round about the time of the immersion of the coffee bean into the coffee, possibly because I'm extremely thirsty, it's very early in the morning, mm. needed a cup of coffee. But it's fascinating. You never thought it would be that simple, stirring a cup of coffee. Uh, no. Time travel. But if I tried to explain it to somebody else, I think I might just get a little bit confused. Really? Yeah. Well, you see, it's... Um, no, I'll tell you what. Well, we'll take a commercial break and I'll explain during the commercial break, OK? So, and then uh, we'll come back to it. Mm. Yeah. Just ahead, he scrimped and saved all of his money just to have it seized by the U.S. government. We'll tell you why the American dream became a nightmare for one immigrant. Do stay with us. Now then, this is how it works. Okay.